very settled camp. There's a lot of Aki will be one of the senior players, and Farrell I think trusts his gut when when it comes to this stuff. And 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 Aki has been a key contributor in this environment over the course of the the, the World Cup cycle. And I think Farrell would would trust that once he links up with Ireland and, and pulls on that different shade of green, mm. he'll he'll be the player that he has been over the last couple of years. If he doesn't, he won't be there anymore. But I I think he's got a big role to play in the Six Nations, regardless of what's gone on in Connacht. Yeah, Fiona, it does make things interesting in that centre partnership because um, we'll get on to Gary Ringrose's form, uh, which has been immaculate the last few weeks. But that number 12 jersey inside him is vacant at the moment with Robbie Henshaw's injury absence, with the rise of a Jamie Osborne, with the consistency to a degree of Stuart McCloskey as well and what he's done with Ulster in the last 12 months in particular, and with Bundyaki. Um, we were talking on, on Monday night that there is a sense that it's there for Jamie Osborne to grab and given the nature of his relationship on the pitch that he's had with Gary Ringrose so far this season that he would be uh, a more than adequate option. Uh, to throw in there against Wales how do you view that centre partnership yeah it's funny you're saying that and I I would have you know a lot of time you you kind of write McCluskey off at times well people do in general and I just thought last weekend he was absolutely outstanding again he'd uh, absolute monster performance and every time it's coming up to to Irish games you know not that he doesn't do it week in week out he really makes you kind of look at his performance and say why shouldn't he be in this Irish shirt Mm. so although Jamie Osborne you know we've seen him he's been absolutely Immaculate for Leinster, he's he's getting better with each game. Um, he obviously doesn't quite have the stock yet, you know, at that high um international level. So he's probably not there yet. But being in that environment going into a World Cup cycle will absolutely push him on as a player. But if 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 Bundy isn't fit or is if he isn't training to his best of ability, I'd have all my faith in McCluskey. He's absolutely doing a, a job for um Ulster and week in, week out. We only notice it with Ulster when he's not playing the impact that he actually has on that team and I and I think he should be given a, a couple of games definitely Six Nations time to, to prove his worth because he's, he's just a brilliant excellent player I think Is that is there a sense there from you Fiona that you don't necessarily see a quote unquote settled centre partnership for the duration of the Six Nations that it is worth road testing a couple of these guys in different partnerships in partnership perhaps with Gary Ringrose in the majority of senses um, going yeah. down through these five matches yeah, definitely. I think Green Rose is it, to me has nailed on. I mean, he, he's he he just brings it every week, mm. and he he's getting better and better. He's so exciting to watch. His skill set, everything about him is just immense at the moment. But I think going into this, you know, into this cycle, we do need to see changes, um, changing up that center. We've had um, World Cups in the past where maybe there's been injuries in the center, and it's really affected an Irish team and and how they're playing. So I think if they can get mix that up a little bit in this six. Nations it will make players you know stronger and we will see come World Cup time that there has been a couple of partnerships and see what works and what doesn't work uh, What's your depth ranking 1, 2, 3 as regards McCloskey, Aki and, and, and Osborne? Oh, put me on the spot um, Well I guess McCluskey's the incumbent and I think that counts for a lot um, I think Aki is a perfect number 23 for this Ireland squad and I think they've used them before and probably Osborne is the outsider um, so as it stands before they've had a day's training I, I think that's the way it stands going in but Farrell we have seen backs players who play, do well in training and, and if I was Jamie Osborne uh, going into that camp I'd be looking at what Mac Hansen did last year and came from pretty much nowhere to start the first Six Nations game of the season because of what he produced in training he w- just wowed them and they just went right we've got to back He's, this, this kid is on a streak we've got to back him now Hansen was a little bit older, a little bit more experienced, and the position was less settled. But they've picked him in that squad partly for his experience, but also on basis of his form. He's playing very well. He's playing in a Leinster setup, which I think is a massive advantage because you're play- you've got Leinster players around you. Unfair as that is on McCluskey, so I think he's got a shot. And people, with, you know, former players are looking at this guy and absolutely raving about him. I, so I've heard some of the most effusive praise I've ever heard from the world of. Um, ex-player punditry about Jamie Osborne um, from some of the greats of the game that I've ever heard about any player so he's clearly very very highly rated he's in very very good form but McCluskey played well in November and started all three games so it's hard to it's hard to argue that he, he should be dropped um, I think he deserves to go into the week certainly before any, any training as the favourite mm. and I think they like Aki in that 23 jersey I think he gives them an awful lot off the bench Is Jack Crowley a, a consideration because when I looked at that Six Nations squad was named last week obviously the three out halves was the main standout and no Carberry but 
Crowley's been operating as an inside centre a lot for Munster in recent weeks. Mm. Is there a sense that he can cover there too and he is an option or is it that? I think I think if you put him in the 22 jersey he could play 12 off the bench. He could play 15 off the bench as well. I I don't see... Ireland have never gone that way. They've always gone for a big powerful inside centre who can win game line for you. Against Wales away from home I think that's what they'll want as well. You know, Henshaw is due back for France maybe, definitely Italy in round, in round three. So... This is this is an open question for a while, but I think Henshaw, barring a pretty strong performance in, in game one, Henshaw will walk back into the team because he's he's so good. Maybe that's unfair, but Henshaw is one of those players with huge status. If he's training well, he'll come back in. Crowley, like Carberry, with the ability to move the full back, offers you a lovely versatility off the bench and a chance to maybe change up what the opposition can see. Yeah. But I don't see him as a test 12 from the start. I, I think Frawley is another one in that regard when, when he's fit. But yeah, I don't see him as a test 12 from the start. I don't see them going that way. They've never gone that way in this cycle. Okay, Fiona, why do those question marks persist over Stuart McCloskey if he has been so consistent and he has operated at such a high level and he has started all three November internationals? Why, why do people still kind of uh, cock their noses at him a little bit? I suppose it's it's just looking at what what we've how inundated and lucky we've been at centres in the past and and the skill set they've had of it. It's not that McCluskey isn't a skillful ball player. It's just that he offers you something a, a little bit different. He's he's physically dominant. He's um you know he gets you over the gain line. Um, his offloading game mightn't be viewed as the as what we see out of the likes of Henshaw or Ringrose. His footwork, I think he's worked on that to be honest in the last couple of seasons and. And, you know, Ulster supporters in particular really, really acknowledge that and really sing his praises in that department. We know physically what he can offer. But I think as as, player, uh, as players and fans, when we're looking on, he's one of those guys that you just know is, is always reliable, always there, physically dominant, but probably doesn't offer you that little bit of X factor that you'd like to see in the centre. Mm. If he was playing for Leinster or Ulster or, Leinster or Munster, would we view him differently? Well, that's what the Ulster texters who are probably in and out us right now would say that. <laughs> and I do think look there is I, I, I think Ulster and Leinster get more coverage they're on primetime TV uh, down south more than, yeah. than Ulster will be They w- we certainly I think watch them more than we do Ulster I've always read to Stuart McCluskey I, I thought he should have had more involvement under Joe Schmidt he's very very unlucky to be um, playing in an era where Henshaw and Ringrose are playing and also the RFU signed Bundiaki to play for Ireland as well and he's been an ex- exceptional player for Ireland so um, he ha- he only won six caps I think over the course of, of nearly nearly a decade of, of playing and now he's suddenly because of uh, an opening came up through Aki's suspension and, and Henshaw's injuries in November he took his chance and, and he deserves as I said to be the, the, the incumbent coming in he did did a lot well in that in that November window but when you look at Osborne and the way he's playing for Leinster and the, and the 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 potential that's there, the speed at which he plays, he plays a couple of he can play a couple of positions. You wonder whether he may accelerate beyond McCluskey over the next two or three years. But I suppose what we're really looking at is is the next six six to eight months. And he's got an awful lot of experience. He's a big game player for Ulster. He always shows up for them. He is he is the capacity to break a game open. He's probably the most like 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 for like with Henshaw in some ways. He he is a real like a real option for a live option for this game and and definitely shouldn't be underestimated. Just a little flavour of tonight's Wednesday night rugby. We will have another clip from the show elsewhere in our YouTube feeds. Don't forget to subscribe here. And if you want the full epic experience with Fiona and with Rory and myself, then don't forget to subscribe to the OTB Rugby feed wherever you happen to consume your podcasts.